Miller's it's a Wales Wales through a goal Swansea beyond Fodringer and the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire Derby oh. and for the first time in 42 yes. years yes. Rotherham United win at Bramall Lane on the edge of the box Adolfi he can hit them and he does oh. Hello everybody, welcome back. This is New York Talk, the Rotherham United podcast, and we have a Yorkshire Derby to preview. Back in action, looking to avoid a record this weekend, well a record equaling uh, defeat as it would be. We'll pass through all that uh, in the next hour or so, whatever, whatever it may be between now and then. Mick, how are you doing? I'm all right, mate. Thank you very much. I like my um, my little um, QR, QR code. friend. Yeah, yeah. T- yeah. I think my wife's gonna be really annoyed when I have to take that down. I put, "Whoa, she's not seen it." Right? <laughs> oh, Danny, how you doing, mate? I'm doing very well, thank you, lads. How are we both? All right. As always, football aside, we're doing really, really well. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's important. That's the important bit in it. Exactly, exactly. Um, so as Mick says, there's a QR code on the top right hand side of the, court, uh, the screen. So as we tweeted out and put on Facebook, we're trying to start trying to start giving them the option to sort of send in your WhatsApp voice notes. So if you scan the QR code, well, there's two options really. You can go onto our Twitter because it's on Twitter and join us, get the number there and send us a voice note or use the QR code, which again will take you to the number that's been set up. Um, and we do a pre, pre, pre one. So you send us your predictions in, look ahead to the Huddersfield game and we'll maybe do a post match. If it's good, We'll keep doing it. If it turns out to be a pile of crap, we can always stop it. There's no pressure. There's no tying um, with it. And as with this show, every so often, it can be a pile of crap. So, there you go. Um, Martin Holland's with us. There's Chris Taylor, Sarah Ogden, Jamie, Jim and Code. Harry's with us. Scott Ken, Nathan Crabtree, Steve Grundy, Terry Fenby. Kelly Fubb says, evening, everybody. Uh, says This is just watched the Hacks interview. He looked absolutely gutted. Yeah, I think he does, sadly. Um... I was mean, last few episodes we've done, they felt really chaotic because of everything that's gone off. We're coming into this now on a bit of a and we're not happy, but everything <laughs> seems to have calmed down a little bit. There's no big news stories. There's you know, we are where we are. Um how are you feeling about Rotherham United right now and how you feel about the you sort of the game you, you, do you still look forward to Saturday, bearing in mind the season? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I'll set this one first. Um, I suppose the only re- real reason I'm looking forward to Saturday is because I'm staying around at my girlfriend's for the first time after the game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you really? But, 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 no. No. Yes, I know. Um, but no, honestly, um, it, it's one of those weird things where you'll sort of um, be downtrodden after the previous Saturday or Tuesday's result and it'll get to the podcast and for some bizarre reason we'll do the podcast preview the game and then suddenly actually you know what I'm really up for Saturday's game and then it'll just scythe us down once again Oh yeah. Um, and I have a feeling it's going to be the exact same uh, this week as well and now that we've just started the podcast I'm weirdly up for Saturday against Huddersfield <laughs> as well because let's face it, it, it has to it has to change at some point don't say. <laughs> You'd assume so. I, I, I hope so. Anyway. Yeah, hope. yeah, yeah. Shall I ask if we've lost five nil on the bounce three times? I don't think we ever lost five nil back to back. I think that was a club first last week. Um, Showstone ask how low will the attendance be? Well, I think Huddersfield have basically sold out two thousand, so there'll be a lot of Huddersfield fans. Um, look, there's a good chance the attendance will be quite low, and that is completely understandable. People, I understand. I. I we, I, I didn't go to Norwich a week. I had a few friends message me saying, did you not go to Norwich? I, said, I don't really want to spend money watching this this, this, this shower at the minute, to be honest with you. Uh, so I, I can understand why people, if you're not a season, if you're a season ticket holder, it's different. I think you've already paid for your ticket, haven't you? Hmm. But I can understand if you're not a season ticket holder, why you'd be thinking, nah, I'm not going to pay 27 quid to watch Louis Knight at the minute. I can completely understand that. Yeah, given the current circumstances with the way the way finances are for everybody now, yeah, I suppose you're right. Um but well, I'll, I'll be there. I'm obviously with season ticket holders, aren't we? So you know, it, it's I guess it's slightly different for us. But 
Yeah, it, it, it's a football match. Rotherham's at home. Why would you? Uh, yeah, I'll be going. I'll be going. There is some good news, isn't there? Tyler Black is likely to be on bench. Yeah, that's going to be good news. I mean, it's a bit late now, but unfortunately, but mm. uh, nevertheless, that's a bit of positive news. So, um, yeah, I'll be going, mate. No fear. I will yeah. be there. Uh, Shelly, Shelly asks, is anybody else contemplating not going to the match? Is at the point where tactically you know what's coming? And it's boring. What I would say to that, and this is the beauty of football, we're going to win eventually. And if you decide not to go and miss the win, miss the one of the few moments of the season that's actually worth smiling about, I think you'd be gutted, is all I would say. Um, but yeah, I understand mm. that people are not bothered about going. Um, because it's... Uh, it's rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, we asked for some questions on Twitter to ask why about any sort of topics we want to cover tonight. Um, Ian Bradley says, Danny, have have the squad become toxic and literally thrown Liam Richardson un, and his staff under the bus? That's a question from Ian Bradley. Um, I was on the Leeds podcast, Leeds show earlier. I know I got on, on the Just Your Football show, and I kind of say the players for me are not playing for Liam Richardson. And that's as much an indictment on the players as it is on Liam Richardson, really, because of how level, how their low their level is in terms of playing for him. Mm. Um, is is it too far to throw him under the bus, or, or is it is it on Liam Richardson? Um, well, <clears throat> me and Ian spoke briefly about this in um, Rotherham Interchange when we bumped into each other, and I actually agree with him. To be fair, I think the players um, aren't buying into what Richardson's bringing to the table, which is why he can't play any sort of way that he wants to try and play because A, the players aren't available in the positions and B, they aren't willing to really, you know, just come together and play as a team. It feels like there's too many individuals in that team who think they're far too good for the relegation scrap that we find ourselves in. Um, And the way it comes across, they're just not playing for the shirt or the badge. That's my opinion and everyone's entitled to their opinions, but it just feels like they've lost interest. It feels like we've got too many players on year contracts who will just go on to the next club in the summer, um, and they've not bought into <clears throat> the um, the Rotherham United mentality at all. Um, I think Richardson's got a point that the club's lost its culture a little bit over the course of this season, and he's trying to reinstill that. But you can't do it with people who don't buy into it. Mm. Um, and I think there's only I think I can name on one hand the players who will. Bought into it at least in some regard, um, and I just hope they're the players that are here next season. But it's going to be a huge rebuild job for Richardson in the summer, mm. I think, when he's brought the players in that he wants and who want who that he wants uh, to suit his system, but also the players that all want to play for Rotherham United and not just play football for whoever's badge just happens to be on the chest. Mm. Yeah, the other country, there won't be many that get championship clubs. Not have to no. play for us. I think there's probably a few that might have got championship clubs last summer. Other championship clubs, um, I, was, I don't think there'll be masses queuing up to sign many of them in the summer. Um, yeah, I mean, Liam Richardson had obviously did the pre-match presser today, Mick. Um, some people find him incredibly boring. Some people are find him it's quite interesting. Um, he talked about having. A conversation with Tony Stewart two or three weeks in the, into the job and being very forthright. Leverson said he was about what needs to change at the football club with this, that, and the other. Mm. Um, we can't really judge him on what changes in the making of the football club because he's still stuck with these players at the minute. And, that, mm. and I know people can use the Danny Royal exception. You can use Neil Warnock example that other other managers are able to get the better out of players that aren't theirs. I don't think Lee Richardson's that guy. I think under his own players, I think I think he's shown that we're going to can do very very well. And I think he needs people to buy into a certain. Same with, it was same with Paul Warren. You need people to buy into a certain way of doing things. Yeah. And I think that's the same kind of thing. I think that's where we are at the minute. I think it is. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And and you know, he's 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 not just inherited players that aren't his. He's inherited players that were already in a losing and a losing mentality already. I suspect, but we none of us actually know what the what the situation is behind the scenes. We can only draw conclusions from what's said by 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 Lim Richardson. But I suspect there was already an atmosphere behind the scenes. You've also got players like you've got quite rightly pointed out there on one year contracts, who some of whom are coming towards the back end of the career, and so perhaps are only playing for a place in a lower division side anyway. It doesn't. It's not. A, it's not a cocktail that, that that's going to bring you success, is it? No. 
Um, I, I, yeah, we can all speculate, can't we, about how toxic it is or otherwise in, in the background. And, you know, I mean, I, it's, it's a bit like the stages of grief, this, isn't it? You know, first of all, it's because we're crapped. Then then we move on to someone else. Then we're going to blame somebody else for this. And then we're going to we're going to go on to the fact that he's lost dressing room. And then we're going to go on to the fact that, you know, players are falling out with each other. I can't remember what the next stage is, but listen, <laughs> we're, we're going down. That's it. Accept it. Smile. Get to the match. Have a laugh. Have a couple of pints beforehand if you want. Whatever it is you do, go home. Moan about it. Got to work on Monday. That's what we do. That's what we've done. That's what I've done for years, years and years and years. And it, the, the issue, yeah, the issues are not going to be sorted out by us as supporters. Yeah. You know, the negative issues might be compounded by us as supporters, but it, it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm kind of fed up of it, if I'm honest with you. I'm the season of, or? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm definitely fed up of the season. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm also fed up of, of, of us and everybody else trying to analyse something that we don't have any information about. Mm. You know? And you're never going to get any information. That's not a, that's not a Rotherham yeah. United thing. That's a, a football club thing. You're never going to get the information to find out why your club is doing well or, or badly. Mm. Uh, it's not going to come out. You know, nobody knows what happens behind the scenes. So we can all, all we can do is speculate and. Speculation is is overwhelmingly negative at the moment. And I understand why, because of the position we're in and the performances we put in. But it's not helping anybody. It's not helping us as supporters. You know, it's just not helping anybody. Shelley says losing mentality. He says we were four points off. Hardly a massive gap. He could have come in. Stamps his authority. We were undoubtedly worse. We were, we, we were four points when Matt Taylor left. We were eight points when Liam Richardson took over. So we doubled the gap. We were in a losing mentality. We lost 5 0. Fact, not a Watford, it, it, that's, average Watford team. Um, with, with respect, Shelley, what you, you're doing there is you're taking out context, yeah, taking yeah. context out of it, because the the reason we were already bottom, it, the, there was a reason why we were already bottom. There was a reason why we got absolutely hammered at, at Watford uh, and at Hull and, and all those other games, and that wasn't just because you know we were four points adrift. It, there was something fundamentally wrong. Mm. And as has been since been proved, you know. So again, that's just my view. I'm not saying mm. I'm not saying it's right, but that's the view. That that's how I would look at it. Yeah. Um, Phil says, "What's point of progress if not debate rather than United? If you want to make some stick, pile on. Honestly, if it, <laughs> if it makes you feel better, just pile on. It's all good. That's what the QR code's for. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Listen, I'm not. I'm not saying that I am right, and I am not saying that we shouldn't talk about it and have a different point of view, which is essentially what a debate is. You know, I'm just. I'm just giving you my my kind of take on it. That's all. Mm. Um, a few, let's round up the international stuff. The brief international. Victor's got his another call up for Sweden. There's no international manager, so you never know. He might might force his way. The same three keepers have been picked. Victor's the only one that's playing regularly above the Al Svensk, which is Sweden, it's Swedish top league. And it's John Dahl Thomason, who is obviously an expert in the champions. He's been managed five for two years almost in, in the championship. So, hope for Victor's sake, he's wearing that number one Sweden shirt. Terry Fenby says, Congratulations to Andy Rina Mota, who has been called up for Zimbabwe. I look at this. So, they've been, he's been called up because they're going to play in a tournament um, with a few different teams. I, I looked at it because you know, there's quite a lot of African teams with really cool nicknames for the team, for the, for the countries. But Cameroon, the Donald Lions. Uh, Malawi, the Flames, which I think is very cool. Zimbabwe, the Warriors. So I thought they might have a cool n name for the tournament. I thought the tournament might be really interesting and really clever. It's just the Four Nations trophy. <laughs> like, I'm really, really disappointing. All these names with cool nicknames. Is nothing, nothing. Uh, Four Nations. Sod it. Just put some effort into it. That's all I'm asking. I'm really disappointed. Um, there we go. It, it almost sounds like the Six Nations, doesn't it? Like you could have had yeah. the cross European Championship when it was Six Nations, originally called the Four Nations, by the way, before France and Italy got well, involved. That's where I got it from, yeah. It's yeah. just lazy. Yeah. yeah. Just and you forgot, you forgot the most important one, Matt. Nigeria's nickname is the Super Eagles. Super Eagles, yeah. 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 There's some really cool um, nicknames. Af Af I don't know why African countries have really, their football teams have really, really cool nicknames. Morocco's the Atlas Lions, which is very, very cool. Um, <laughs> it's really, really enjoying this part of the show, I think. Um, 
There's not there's some less good ones. This one, Sao, Sao Tom and Principal, just the green yellows, which is really it doesn't even make any sense, <laughs> does it? The green yellow. Anyway, anyway, this is this is how bad our season's got. Um, that we're doing this. Smil Exo says that we're planning on replacing Mick with a QR code. It's an option. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you get more yeah. sense out of it. <laughs> what, you, what you secretly don't know is that Mick's actually generated by AI these days. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Med exploded a long time ago, and it's just <laughs> yeah. Um, Scott Kent says there's a few. There's going to be an awful lot of humble pie being eaten. If it took, like, at least, but when if Liam Richardson turns up next season, turns it around next know, season. Is there isn't because the people the people who were criticizing him now will just go quiet. That's what they do, and then they'll wait for something else negative to happen and they'll pile on that as well. So mm. yeah. Uh yeah. Uh we're in another one. Harry says if we lose on Saturday and Rinamoto wins one of the three, then he would have won more. He would have won more on the two-week break than he's won the entire. I mean, there's a, there's a chance he could do, he's playing three games. He could win as many games in an international break as we won all season. <laughs> um, which is um, we do quite enjoy. Um, Gaza was on Twitter again. Says <laughs> this is most for Mick, I think. Um, why isn't Tony Stewart putting twenty million pounds into a new training ground out in, in like Wickham? Um, this is again. We're not laughing. We're not laughing at the situation at Reading, by the way, because that is an absolute disaster. They're, they're currently getting. If you if you if you think your football club's in a bad situation, there's always something worse. And Reading are currently that club. That are worse. They're having to sell off. Well, their chairman, their owner, is trying to sell off their in, off their uh, what was a I think a fifty million pound state of the art training ground. He's trying to sell it off for twenty million pounds, and he claims it's to for the club to survive for the rest of the season. Yeah, there was right. rumours he's trying to get it paid into a private bank account. Um, we'll see on that one. Um, but yeah, Mick, I see you tweeting a few times today mm. about this. Um, the vultures are often circle, and I didn't know. I didn't know we can well that close to Reading, to be honest with you. I mean, geography is not great. Um, yeah, it's not far away. It doesn't feel great to just do that, but then am I being idealistic? Well, I mean, if you, if you, and, and, and Twitter is never a good barometer, really, is it, of anything? But um, if, if you look at some of the responses from Wickham fans, some very, very upset and annoyed Wickham fans. Let alone um, mm. in fans. Um, so it's interesting, you know, where the Wickham got 20 million quid from. Well, they've got an American owner, aren't they? Um, yeah. What's he done for Wickham? Uh, he's employed, he employed Rock Singer for long enough, didn't he? Who got him nowhere. Mm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, as a football club, as a business, Reading have had this coming to them for a long time. We yeah. said this. I mean, I, I seem to recall. I was thinking about this earlier on. I seem to recall you sending me on a Reading podcast because I criticised Reading. And I had to go on there and defend myself to. Uh, oh, to COVID, Reading. that. That's all I'm going to do. COVID, wasn't it? COVID was it. Yeah. Um, so, so Reading have had it coming to them. The supporters, I feel desperately sorry for. It, it's just, it's just, it's horrendous. We've been there. Um, there's another subject we could talk about as well a, a little bit later on about uh, similar sort of situations. Um, but but yeah, it's, it's horrendous. But I guess it, it's it's a valid question. Why isn't Tony Stewart spending 20 million grand quid on a training facility? <laughs> yeah, well, that, that'd be all his money gone probably. There is there isn't a training oh. facility within 50 miles of here that's for sale for 20 million pounds? Well, well you, have to, you do get it so the bigger clubs. So, for example, I think Stockport rent out Man City's old training ground or Man United's old training ground. So there are examples of picking up, well, using other people's. Um, I think Barrow used somebody else. But Barrow don't actually train in Barrow. They will train to a near Manchester because I don't think they play mean, well in Barrow. The, 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 the training ground issue is, 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 is not really the point of this, is it? The point of this is that a club of the size of Wickham is spending 20 million quid. Mm. On anything, yeah. well, yeah. Uh, that uh, I, I assume we're not going to be any. Uh, nobody's going to be asking any questions as to why that's been allowed to happen. Well, this why is we... it, isn't it? You've, you've got a club who has spent beyond their means trying to sell something, 
to a club 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 going to be spending over their means to yeah, buy the I mean, it, it all makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And it sounds all, all sounds perfectly legitimate. Yeah, yeah. Not. nothing dodgy, nothing to see here, ladies and gentlemen. And, and and the fact that it's come at a time when when people are we're having the issues that we've got with our training uh, mm. facilities, it, it 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 doesn't, you know, it, it it just gives somebody some people some people a bandwagon to jump on, without even giving it a second thought that there might be something not quite right about this deal mm. somewhere along the line, given the people that are involved, you know. There's there's a lot of disquiet about the owners of, of Wickham, which I'm surprised mm -hmm. that I didn't realise. But it certainly surfaced today from a from from quite a few people, quite quite a few different people involved or supporting Wigan Wigan football Wigan uh, Wigan Wickham, sorry, um, you know, uh, which is a surprise. But then I guess if you've got a multi-millionaire or a billionaire owning your club and you're still languishing in League One and he's not spending money on on players and, and everything else, and then all of a sudden turns up with 20 million quid to, to, to shell out on a training ground. It, it just doesn't sound right, does it? No. But it allows people ammunition to say, well, our club's not doing this, our club's not doing other, which is a bit short-sighted in my view. Mm. It is a question. How much did it cost to build New York Stadium? Like a, a, a brand new purpose-built stadium? What, 20, 25 ish? I think 25. So we can have bought a training ground for. 20 million when they could have built a stadium of similar ilk to New York Stadium for five million more, mm. which in football terms is nothing. You got to see foundations, depending on the Saudi club, anyway. This is what we've been saying for a few weeks when it's about foundations is, the, is mm. the training ground more important than the stadium? This is not, it's just again slightly different what we're talking about. Yeah, so it's getting your, it's getting your foundations of a training ground. The, the actual bedrock of building a future football club, which is something we've let fly a little bit. Um, I, I suppose I suppose it was um, need of a new stadium at the time, and the yeah, and for us anyway, training grounds just lag behind. Um, yeah. but I mean, if we spent twenty million pound on the training ground and still played at Millmore, you would be asking questions, wouldn't you? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Which is essentially what they're doing, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, let's face it, Adam, uh, Adams Park isn't the best ground, is it? Is it middle of industrial estate, for God's sake? Aren't they all now, it is. Yeah. Is it, it's, and, a, it's a new I, I, ground, Adams Park. I don't know, not heard that. Point but it, 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 makes, it makes you think, how many teams have got like a town centre, like a new town centre stadium recently? Not many. Ma maybe not many maybe York? Maybe. Le Leicester's is basically the middle of Leicester, isn't it? Well, yeah, well it's, it, it's built just like an off angle from Filbert Street, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, true. Um, back to Rotherham United. Somebody asked, um, Jamie says, Have we ever gone a full season without an away boom before? Yes, we have 2016 17. 2016 17. Yay, cold stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. I got a question on the on the season. It was, we'll maybe talk about the game in a minute, but there's not much I don't need the players, but we're on 19 points. We're gonna get a potentially on a club record equaling defeats if we don't have 10 defeats in a row, which is the club record. Do you care about these records or are these records as they come? You know, if we end up on 22 points, have a club have a, have a record. Do you care or is that is it grating on you that we're potentially gonna be the record breakers again? I, I don't particularly care about records. Either way, to be honest with you, I care about the lack of performances and I care about the disappointment that we all suffer every weekend as a result of it. You know, I, I, the, the end result, I, I'm not interested. You know, it just gives people something to take Mickey out of you with, doesn't it? That's all it is. It's, it's just now, I don't, I, the, the, as far as records are concerned, it's, it's a mild, a mild annoyance, isn't it? But that's about as far as it goes, really. Um, so, nah, I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. What I want is some. I want is some some guts and some balls. Is what I want. Um, you know, even from the players who are allegedly allegedly aren't bothered, just have some self respect. You know, take some responsibility and 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 do your job. If if that is indeed the case that they're not, uh, but the performances certainly aren't there. So, yeah. Mm. I, no, I don't. I don't care. I'm not interested. And and you know that anyway. You you know you, yeah. you've, you've talked to me previously about you know we haven't done this for, for the last 25 years. We haven't you know beaten these or, or whatever. It's 
it's the here and now that's that's important and um and in the here and now we're absolute garbage or we have been yeah uh show so it's more annoying that all football firms all football journalists will reference it every opportunity yeah with the and then and, and sorry sorry about this danny that's because they're lazy <laughs> But it is. Yeah. It is. I'm not. I'm not having a dig. I'm not digging Danny out there because Danny's. Danny's. Whilst he's been. Whilst he's qualified, he's not actually a football journalist. But that. That's just laziness. It's just laziness. You know. If you want to. If you want to tell a story, get to the bottom of it. Get the evidence. Get the information and tell it properly. Or, just pick some sound bites up and get some clicks. It's like second tier pod in it. You know. It's. It's that kind of stuff. Get as is many it like clicks. the Watford manager stat. Isn't the Watford manager stat from the weekend? They've had more managers since 2019 than there's been Dalai Lamas since 1589 or something like that. I love that stat. That's that good, but we like that one, don't we? So yeah. that's funny though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That is funny. <laughs> and somebody's done a bit of research, you know, they've put a bit of effort. Oh, yeah. That. True. Speaking of research, do you want to hear my latest bit of research that I've been doing? Yes, please, Danny. If yeah, it's so... negative, Danny, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll pop and get myself a coffee if it's going to be rate negative. <laughs> right, okay, mate. We'll see you in two minutes then. Oh, cool. um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I've been doing a bit of looking into like Rotherham's quote unquote worst seasons, um, not just Rotherham United's history, but Rotherham's football league history. So that's going back to like 1893 when Rotherham Town were first elected into the second division. Um, and as it stands, um, just for context before I, I tell you the results, um, I've adjusted the older seasons to incorporate three points for a win, so you can actually get a, an accurate measure of uh, points won compared to modern seasons, uh, and then calculated points per game from there, because a few seasons, like they're only like 42, 28, 30-odd mm. games played because there are only 12 teams in the division. Anyway, um, so the quote-unquote worst Rotherham United season was actually 16-17, where we got 23 points and a points per game of 0.5. Um, and then second place, as it stands, is this season, with a points per game of 0.51, um, which makes those two the worst Rotherham United seasons. But if you factor in Rotherham County... Their worst season was 1924-25. The final one? Um, what's that? Well, that? That's their final one, I guess, then. Yeah, that was their final season before the two came together, where they got um, 28 points adjusted from 42 games. So that's 0. 0.6 points per game. But in that season, uh, they got re-elected as Rotherham United, like you say, Matt. Half a point a game. That's, that's, that's the level we're sitting here. Half a point a game, yeah. and I'm on average... Um, it's madness, isn't it? It's just, it's just complete madness. Um, not right. Uh, Kelly Fox right. says records are there to be uh, right, there to break. Yes, they are. Yeah. If you want to factor that. in um, the first ever football league season in Rotherham, which was 1893 94, um, that's Rotherham's fifth worst season on records, where they got uh, where are we, where we got 21 points adjusted from 28 so that's 0.75 points per game uh, and that was another season where we got re-elected as well so lord knows what the football league were thinking re-electing is again nobody left <laughs> yeah nobody left and it's like hmm, who will we have Rotherham or Loughborough um <laughs> but yeah so as it stands this is the second worst season in Rotherham's entire football in history um oh, for breaking millers Come yeah on. with with the potential of it becoming the worst as well okay if you've watched us since 2016 you've seen the worst season in, in history the worst championship season in history you've seen a two playoff two Wembley wins you've seen a club record unbeaten run in the last promotion season you've seen a promotion and a Wembley win and a cup win in the same season and you're now seeing again the records it's just it's gone full circle if you only joined in 2016 as a fan so um, what you're moaning about <laughs> it's exciting. It, I won't call this exciting. Um, oh, it's, it's not boring. That's that's for sure. I'm not sure you're not bored having these same conversations. Even not, yeah. I'm not. So don't just mean on the podcast. I mean, if you, just with the people <laughs> you meet and go, oh, you're a Rotherham fan. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm, of, I, I'm lacking the it. sympathy. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Danny, what's our best season? Uh, oh, I, I've not 
done the complete list, but off the top of my head, um, it's um, a throw up between three. If you want to factor in league title seasons, I imagine it may have been 80 81. Um, highest position was 54 55 when we finished third in second division and lost out on goal average to Birmingham and Luton. Goal average, but in terms of what happened in the season, it was um 21 22 because that's the only season where Rotherham have done a double promotion and cup in our history. Mm. Um, and it's also the club's record of unbeaten games as well. So I'd, say, so I'd say by numbers, it's probably 21 22. Yeah. Most in best of worst. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, that's, some, that's some flex, that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, go back on to the Saturday. Back on Saturday, Miller Exco says he agrees with me. Just want performance, something to make me stand up. He says, This rubbish is doing my knees in because they seize up due to inaction over 90 minutes. <laughs> that's why Mick gets so angry at referees. So it gives me a reason yeah. to stand up. I stand and up. Out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Danny, it's, 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 it's a Yorkshire derby. That's what it is. Um, it's a massive, massive game for Huddersfield. It's it's one of their biggest games because they're looking at us and thinking, God, if we don't beat Rotherham, where's our season going to spiral to? They've Their fans, I know for a fact, their fans are coming thinking, we have got to win this game. As a, as a player, I, I'd be sort of almost relishing that and sort of saying, hey, this is, this is a biggie for them. Let's try and bully their nose. But I have absolutely zero faith in this team that they're going to do anything. I, I just can't see it. Well, that's what Liam Richardson has basically said in his interview with Radio Sheffield. He basically says he wants the the poor positioning and poor performances to almost almost be the motivator for us mm. to do better. Um, but I agree. You know, Uddersfield will come here thinking, right, this is a chance for us to really show and pick up three points and potentially try and um, set our season to survival. Um, <laughs> But uh, from what we've seen in Rotherham over the last few games, will we have the guile to perform to Richardson's wishes? And not to be the negative person, because I'd like to find the positive in everything, but I don't think we have. If I'm being completely honest, I don't think we've got the fighting guile to look at Huddersfield and just go, you know what, they're down here with us. They're going to be a little bit nervous and anxious of trying to get three points out of this game. So if we give them a game, we might upset them. But mm. Huddersfield... We'll come into this game like Sheffield Wednesday did, um, and they'll really give it a good give it a good go and battle hard for every ball, every second ball, every set piece, whatever. And they'll probably get the better of us, like Sheffield Wednesday did. I, I I imagine Huddersfield will play against us how we should be playing against everybody else. Mm. It'll be a, it'll be a very, in my opinion, anyway, it'll be very similar to the Sheffield Wednesday game. Mm. Uh, maybe with Huddersfield scoring two, maybe three, instead of just the one from Wednesday. Mm. Yeah, we didn't do a scan report because of the stage of the season. I don't think it matters who we play, so we may not do any more scan reports for this season. We'll uh, bring it back next season. It is, in general, a great resource scan report for us as a podcast to, to, to sort of get research. Um, but I mean, I mean, been on the the Yorkshire football show, White Rose Rivals show. Mick, I spoke to Cossie, who's a who's Huddersfield fan. Last couple of games, they've started really quickly on this new manager. They started strong, went one 0 up against West Brom, but then it's tailed off. The problem for mm. us is if they get an early goal against us, it's game over. We we don't come back. We're not West Brom. We've got that ability to come back from the from the dead almost. If they get a goal inside 10, 15 minutes, you're looking at again a really a potentially a really, really harrowing afternoon. Yeah, potentially. Let's wait and see who he picks. You know, I'm really interested to see the team selection on Saturday. Because if if the rumor, if there is any truth in the rumors that there are issues with some players, then we'll be able to tell by the ones that have been dropped. Um, you would think. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you know, it, I don't want that to happen. And I'd like to think that we can at least have the balls to come out and 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 give it a go. Um, we know that. Just play to the capabilities. If we play to the capabilities, we could get we, we could quite easily win, get something out of the game. Mm. You know, um, it's just whether or not whether or not they're going to do it or not. And I suppose that's the that's the that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. yeah and I think we all know the answer, uh, given given the way that the performances have been over the last few weeks. Um, it's just a shame. It's just a shame. And, and I feel I feel. 
I feel for the likes of Victor and Hax and, and people like that who are absolutely committed to this. And, and they've been let down and, and their careers potentially are being affected, particularly Victor, you know. He's, 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 he's a quality, quality footballer, a quality goalkeeper. He's an international goalkeeper and he shipped 10 goals in two games. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, for a team that's bottom of the league, his career, it's not going to be doing it any good whatsoever. Um, you know, you do, you would hope that some of these players would at least have the have the the decency to stand up and protect the players that want to make something of themselves. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's I don't know what to expect on Saturday. I I, I kind of expect a defeat. Um, Huddersfield are, are down near the bottom. They they ain't they ain't any good in 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 comparison to some of the teams that we've put performances in against this season. Mm. Um, so the bottom line is we should be winning this game on Saturday. We should be winning it quite comfortably. But I don't think I, I'd, I'd be very surprised if we get out of the game. I'll be I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Well, it's Huddersfield game. The first game after the international break, first of break, that's where the rot set in, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Prior to that, you had the Norwich game where everything were, were, were quite good. And then that turgid performance against Huddersfield copped up against against Warnock. And it's, we've never really recovered from that for some reason. No. Um, Billy says he can't see us winning for the rest of the season. You're not on your own, sadly. Um, Danny, do you think Shelley says, do you think losing Cam and Tad Lackett has killed us? Lose one, lose one, and we probably still have a chance. He has also lost Hacks as a midfield threat. Hacks is possibly the biggest loss to be honest with that midfield. We've no attacking threat in that midfield at the minute, and that's probably our biggest. Look, we, we, we've, we've not lost lots of games, but other than ignore the recent weeks, we've not lost loads of games by loads of goals. We lost five nil Watford, a whole ball at Watford, sorry, four one to Hull. But outside of those, there's not many batterings. So if there had been a goal threat, we might have been in some of these games. Yeah, potentially. But it also <clears throat> begs the argument, you know, you <laughs> um, you, lo you, you lose games by conceding more than, than you score, which mm. is blatantly obvious with football. Um, but it also plays into the thing of, yeah, I think losing Cam and, and Blackett has affected us more than people realise. I think when you lose two of your quote unquote main defenders within a very short window of each other, um it it will kill you off because that's something that you cannot plan for, even with the most overthinking planners out there. Um and that led us to sign some players who, you know, aren't up the must aren't up to the muster or are injury prone themselves. I mean, look at Grant Hall, for example. He's in the same <laughs> neck of the woods as Daniel Ayala. He's only made six appearances. For his this season, so it begs the question: Why is he still here? And I think it's because Blackett isn't full strength. Mm. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think with with Humphries and Blackett being in the team and being one hundred percent fit in an ideal world, it would have played into our favour and would have given Victor a hell of a lot more protection mm. than what we've got at the minute. Okay. And it would have allowed Adolphin to play further forward in midfield as well, which we discussed on the last podcast. Um, is one of his main goal threat areas. Um, but he's had to go into defence and do a job that he's good at anyway, but is not it's not deployed in our best interests of him, if that makes sense. Um so yeah, so I think that, that plays into it. And again, that's something that um Richardson had has had to have mitigated because he inherited that. That's something yeah. he can't change. So he's had to try and adjust and, and change where he can there. Um so yeah, it's it's just been a perfect storm of losing key players, losing a club mentality, and signing players who don't have the um, the guile to see it through, regardless of where we are points wise. Mm. Um, I think that's why that's why we are where we are. Obviously, there's other factors that have played into those three, but in my opinion, they're three of the main ones that have affected us this season, and I think. Um, next season, if we keep Humphreys and we keep Blackett, that could play into our favour and play into Richardson's favour as well. Mm. If they want to be here. If they want to be here. And I think yeah. that is one of the main things we'll revisit in the summer, which players have the... Uh, not the audacity, that seems seems a wrong word, but, you know, that 
willingness to stand above the trenches and go, I want to be here, I want to right the wrongs of last season. Hmm. It'll say a lot about the character of the of the players who want to stay and want to write it. Um, and it'll say a lot about the players who just go, nah, I'm out and don't even entertain it. Yeah, Cam Wilford's not been the same since he's come back. He's not, he's no. not been the player he was. Um, so you don't know what his relationship with... I, I, I don't I don't think he's one of the ones, that, one of the guys that's not sort of bothered anymore. But he's not quite been the same player since his injury. Oh, um, I don't see that at all. I don't think... It, I, we might be players around it, but if we're, if we're sat here saying defence has been rubbish, which it has been, and we're, and we're not blaming Hacks because I think Hacks has been good, Cal Humphries falls into the other category, doesn't he? Not for me. Absolutely not for me. No. I don't, I don't. It's whoever's been in the middle has been the issue. Yeah. For me, every time, um, whether it be Morrison or Peltz or, or whoever's played in that centre centre area, uh, that's been the issue. I, I agree with what Shelley said there. Th- those two injuries in those two weeks basically sealed their fate, in my view, um, and that set in set in, in motion a chain of events that just pulled the rug completely and utterly under our, from under our season and caused a lot of the problems that we've got now. Mm. Yeah, uh, Harry says we don't even think we have a first eleven for next season. Yeah, but think but you think about it this way. We, during the summer, you often get people complaining that we don't sign enough players. You no, know, we only need like five or six <laughs> players and we wait till July to sign them. It's a problem. Because we'll need so many players. We'll be signing every other week. It'll be, it'll be great. People will be buzzing. Uh, we're going to win league in a canter. We'll, we'll end up having two signings a week with how many players <laughs> that we need. So I, I saw a comment earlier about needing 12 to 14. If I'm being honest, with the players that might potentially move on for fees as well as players who won't be re-signing, etc. Um, I think it will be more than 14. We might be looking closer to 18. It might be an entire well, new match day squad, to be fair. Well, we're going to do a mailbag episode next Sunday, so because it's an international break. And during the... I'm sure we will get a question, I think I think we already have, actually, about who you would keep and the sort of squad for next season. So we'll, I'll put some together, so there's some on screen, so we can all look at who's in contract, who's not in contract, that kind of thing. And we'll have a, we'll have a play around, see what we think, because I agree, Danny. It's going to be a lot of new signs. It's going to be a brand new squad, other than maybe four or five. Um, but yeah, Josh Caswell is Blackwell back in training. Yeah, back in training, mm-hmm. back in full training. He's potentially in the squad for this weekend. Uh, if he's not in this weekend, I suspect he'll be fully ready for the uh, Preston game. Preston's first game back, isn't it? Um, um, no, I, I think so. Preston Good Friday. That's, so. um, he, uh, good Friday, isn't it, Preston? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah, it was about just in time to come from his relegation, which is great news for Tyler Blackie. Well done. Uh, <laughs> just in time to get the wooden spoon. Well done. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we can't be relegated this week. There's a chance we could be relegated against Preston, but that would require results to go against us this this week and Good Friday. It's either the Millwall Easter Monday or Plymouth on the Sky and Slav on Sky Friday. I think there are probably two. I'm telling you, that's why they've, suge- they've selected it because they think that's when we're going to be relegated. I'm telling you, that's why. You're absolutely right. And knowing Sky, you know, they'll have, you know. No, 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 no. Knowing Sky, it's going to go Baba and we'll get relegated against Preston. Then <laughs> yeah, Preston maybe. So then they've just got a nothing game on Sky, like already relegated Rotherham and Plymouth. They were like, where are Plymouth about 18th? They have, they have only like a two points of relegation. So. Yeah, so it's just going to be a nothing Incredible. game where. It, it, it's sods law, isn't it? It's sods law that Sky go, ooh, Rotherham might go down against Plymouth. That's the mathematical answer now. It'll be Preston. We'll, we'll lose 6-0. Um, mm-hmm. And everybody else will win about four or five around us. Yeah, probably. It, it, because, because, because the leagues are so close, it would need a lot of teams to win and because they're all on quite close points. So it's uh, it's complicated. And, and it doesn't really matter, does it? We're down anyway. Um SK is a QPR fan. He says he says we will rebuild in League One and come back stronger. Says they may will be joining us yet. We want to battle. Yeah, I mean, I mean we, we, the problem is we we do we go down a League One, we rebuild, and we don't come back any stronger. That's the issue. That's the part that we keep getting wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You have nailed it there. Um, yeah, Chris says you can see Victor's frustration when a goal goes in. One of few play him and Hacks every time a goal goes in, they're basically devastated. Um, I think Ollie sure. as well. Ollie seems to be very emotional when we concede as well. Sometimes I think again that's lessened over the last few weeks. But I, I wonder if he's just been worn down, just mentally. Mm. I think he's, he's had a tough season, Ollie. He's had a really, really tough season. I mean, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I mean my personal, personal yeah. Draco's drop off in performance from last season to this season is probably yeah. the biggest drop off we've had. Um, he's obviously really struggled for one reason or another. Injury, he's only been injured as well, hasn't he, to be fair. Um, yeah, uh, Andrew Lang, uh, again, a Twitter, we have to be able to set the um, agenda. Andrew Lang with a controversy, says might be controversial, but should we be drop resting Victor? He's nothing to prove and, it, and he's our player of the season, but like to move on in the summer. Should Liam Richardson see if Phillips is the answer for next season and give him a run of games? I remember in 2005, Mick, when we got relegated um, and Mick Hartford came in and he played, yeah. I think, I've seen to remember him dropping Pollitt or dropping Mike Pollitt and playing Gary Montgomery just to bed him in. Mm. So it is something that's done, um, but at the same time, Dylan, even in League One, Dylan Phillips is not my number one. I, I'm, I'm going out and getting another number one anyway. Mm. So for me, you play Victor and yeah, yeah. Just play I, I, Hundred percent agree with that. I don't. I don't. I don't think that's. Um, it's not something I would consider um, personally. But that's. Yeah, that's just me. I. I, I I'm, it's a no from me. <laughs> Fair. Then are you the same? Yeah. I, I just. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. Working. Yeah. I mean, like, like I say, it's been done in the past, but I think with every hope and a prayer, both us and Richardson has, Victor's going to be here next season. With, with, with every hope and a prayer that we've got, he is going to be like, obviously that's Richardson's working idea for next season. Whether yeah. it changes in the summer, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but Victor's still our best shot at at least having some sort of good performance on the football pitch. And I think that's why he keeps playing him because um, I think it'd do a worse job for Victor's mentality to swap the keepers out Potentially, yeah. um, and may sway him to leave anyway. Like, mm -hmm. like, just to give him that little push to go, yeah, no, we, we don't see anything happening next season, so we're going to drop you. I think that the smartest move is to keep Victor where he is. I think it's kind of sweet, that You think that there's still a chance that Victor might be in next yeah. season. Well, this, this is a, this is the thing. To quote, to quote Hoppenheimer, it's near zero, <laughs> right? It's not, it's not, there's no, it's not a zero chance of us keeping him. It's near zero, but there's always that okay. little chance, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I like your optimism, Danny. Because <laughs> that's what I'm here for. I'm the eternal yeah, optimist, yeah. even though the club's completely gone down the toilet this season. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't even know what else to ask you about this game coming up to finish with you. <laughs> um, it's just. How many, here's one. How many goals do you think Danny Ward's going to score against us? <laughs> <laughs> that's actually coming, surely. Yeah, probably. He'll, he'll do a Tommy Eves when he used to play for all and then sign back next season. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's like um, his apology. He'll score an hat trick, relegate us, and then go, Oh, that were a bit harsh. I'll go and sign from on loan. <laughs> uh, Phil says, Let Victor go re sign Josh Vickers. I know that's right up mixed street. Uh, yeah, man, absolutely. 100% we on that, Phil. I think that's a that's a that's a fantastic suggestion, mm. personally. Um, and I'd be all for that. In fact, I might even I might even send a strongly worded email to Rob Scott after we finish this, <laughs> expressing my uh. My views on that matter, definitely. Defo. Richard says two for Ward, one for Wiles. We all forgot about Wiles. We all forgot about Wiles, didn't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, although I don't think he's been starting, to be fair. He'll be back next season when they've had enough of him. Wouldn't surprise me. I don't, I don't think he's got. he's been that... I don't think he's that highly thought of by the fans. And it's, this is his third manager he's had so far. Um, mm. But yeah. Yeah, uh, referee. We have Mr. Josh Smith. He's refereed us three times in total. He well, he sent off Daniel Arla in the Swansea game, the other one where he brought the ball back on the pitch. Um, that was the first yellow card, and then the second one was, was a foul. Um, he also refereed the Bristol City game away last season. You know, we, we got that really, really soft penalty that John Hugel mm -hmm. then scored. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the referee in that one as well. So, I don't think he's a very good referee. Um, even though one of them went in our favour, the penalty was all in our favour. It wasn't a very, very good decision. Um, but yeah, that's that's who it is. There we are. I still think it's a madness that we've only been awarded one penalty this whole season. Yeah, that's a oh. madness. Yeah, it is. And we've uh, also never had a player sent off against us. Well, yeah, she's tweeted on it that the, the, the two, there's only two teams in the championship that have not had a man sent off against them this season. And it's Rotherham Huddersfield. So it's going to finish nine versus nine, isn't it? Correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got Wednesday if I'm watching. Hello. Hello. Um, 
He says, would you win, aren't we? Show Wednesday how to beat the mighty Huddersfield would be great. Listen, I'm all for that. All for that. Let's keep Wednesday up there. If anything yes, we can do to help keep them up, I'm all for it, mate. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Um, do you think, Mick, after relegation is confirmed, do you think that changes anything for Liam Richardson in terms of, in terms of the games? Because we're going to have seven or eight no. games. Because the, uh, the people always say, oh, the pressure's off. Somebody put in the comments uh, that pressure's off a little bit. Do you think it'll allow him to relax a little bit and, I don't know, do something different? Because because relegation's then confirmed. It it can drop whoever wants to drop there because technically nothing's rel relying on them in the freebies, complete freebies. I mean... It, I, I'm I'm all for being positive. I'm I'm all for it, and and you know I, if I, if I can be positive, happy clappers and all that. You know we get criticised so much, so much on this podcast at times for 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 for, for being too positive and everything else. Even I cannot see a single positive, uh, draw a single positive from the fact that we're 19 points behind. 20. 20 points now. So we're more points behind safety than we've actually achieved all season <laughs> with nine games to go. So if 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 the actual confirmation of relegation is going to take the pressure off, then well, it's not, is it? Well, we, I mean, it's not. So no, I don't think I don't think I don't think anything will change. Um and I and I just think if if William Richardson's got his head screwed on right in reality if you could catch him in a in a, a quiet moment it'd be saying just get this season fish, finished over and done with yeah. like we all are um so yeah I, I just yeah just just get out there and muddy some noses for god's sake yeah we did against the switch yeah we did mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah yeah um, Richard says, "Why would players change if the relegation confirmed? They're not bothered now. It's just, it's just a funny quirk of football. How many times have we seen teams get relegated and then win a couple of games? Yeah, um, didn't, didn't that happen in sixteen, seventeen, where we were confirmed going down and then we suddenly picked up? We picked up one win, I think, post relegation. I think there were a few draws, and I think there were more positive performances. Well, well, there, um, well, there you go. We'll have relegation confirmed, and then we'll beat somebody. Correct. Um, Kelly Bob says, listen to me. Just wants the performance from the lads, and that's all yeah. we're asking for." We're not yeah. asking you to beat Huddersfield necessarily, although we'd love it. We just want to see a go. Just have a go. Kick them. If it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we, we this week, obviously. <laughs> obviously <laughs> so like, just pull a Fergie, kick, kick, kick a few boots, see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Someone says to Real Madrid. This week, with eight years or so, I guess it's the 3 3 at Derby. Just as some, I'm, we're not going to come out 3 0 down, but just something that resembles a bit of fight. Mm. Um, yeah, just summer. Come on, Millers. If anybody's watching, just give summer to, to be positive about because we're fed, we're fed up on just parroting the same crap about how crap they are. Um, Harry says 5 0 again is sacked. Danny, do you think is under any pressure from another if a, in a potential another battering? No, I, I think, um, both I think Tony Stewart's had signed him as a bit of a league one revival sort of manager potentially and I think um Tony's gonna have to um lay in his bed that he's already made where he said Richardson will be manager next season. So I think regardless of what happens now, Richardson will be here next season and he'll be judged on the opening ten games or ten games or so next season. So I think Did he sign a two year two and a half year contract or eighteen month? Uh that's a good question actually. Did you, what do you think? I thought it was two and a half years. I thought, yeah, yeah. I, th I thought it was. It matched up with Matt Taylor's contract, didn't it? it just yeah, ended yeah. when Matt Taylor was meant to, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then it's going to double check for us. I just wonder when that's how relevant that's going to be. Um, three and a half year contract in December. Three and a half. Yeah. Oh, that's longer than I thought. There you go. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you have something else you say want to talk about, Mick? Yeah, I just thought I was. I, <clears throat> I were quite, I, I, quite interesting. Uh, there's been a meeting this week, kind of between Premier League and EFL in relation to uh, how the funding would be, how some of the funding would trickle down the the football pyramid. Um, and it, I, I, there's been a vote, and 
I look at the the people who voted against having this uh, cash distributed, and I think back to a few years ago, sitting at the bottom of the league two with a points deduction, Wales and Luton, and a another team, and then I look at the teams that have voted against it, mm. and they're Bournemouth sitting there trying to pull ladder up behind them. Um, I just I find it sickening, really sickening that uh, a club that's been in the position that they were in not that long ago at all, um, I, I, you know, are quite happy to, like I said, pull the ladder up behind them. It's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. They should be ashamed of themselves. Um, absolutely ashamed of themselves. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I mean, it might just be my view, but it is a fact as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I agree. It, it just goes to show uh, the different mentalities now between the Premier League and the AFL. And the more football ticks on, the more the Premier League is heading towards an MLS-style league where they don't want to even bother um, with the other side of things. And if that's the way, let them crack on with it. You know, we'll, best... support, we'll support proper football and they can be money-grabbing sods that they are. Well, I mean, the, the, bo the bottom line is that, that one of the best things that could happen football in this country is for a European Super League. Get rid of those six clubs. Get rid of them. We don't need them in this country. They are a waste of space. A complete waste of space. And, and let's just get rid. And then the foot and football will be a lot better place in this country. It will be a lot better supported, a lot better financed. Just get rid of them. It was a real disappointment to me when that, that was shelved. And I hope, I hope it comes back and I hope we get rid of them. I want them gone. Yeah. I think we should deny Premier League teams access to the EFL Cup because they no longer want to be associated with the EFL by the sounds of it. But then it'll just be meaningless because there'll be no Premier League team. The, the, the problem you've got is that the EFL have zero leverage in this situation. Because yeah. what can the EFL do? The EFL can't really restrict teams from getting promoted to the Premier League and can't stop teams getting relegated because then it comes a close shot that nobody really wants that. And I know that's a, it's a, it's a, you know, so, but you can't do that. Well, the, the, EFL... pre the Premier League is effectively a closed shop anyway. But technically, it's not a look at Luton and things like that. We're all dreamers, aren't we? We all have that dream of, you know, if you close the shop, then... then yeah, 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 I mean, the, the pipe dream is for a team to establish themselves in the Premier League. I mean, it's Wrexham's pipe dream as well. But at the same time, how many teams have been in the EFL for the vast majority of their history and broken into the Premier League and established themselves? Maybe Brentford, due to a... A short term time in the Premier League now. But, but um, the only reason the Championship so one of the reasons Championships are so popular is because you get to the Premier League. So if you have no Premier League, the Championship's not as in for the outside world. The Championship's not as interesting. So there's less TV money coming in because who cares? They're just a random league. That, but but, but it make English football there. a lot closer because the gulf Possibly. between the Championship and League One is effectively the same as the Championship to the Premier League. But again, you're living in an idealised world. Yeah. Personally, I think what will happen is you'll have the eventual split like you had when the Football League formed in the first place. You had the Football League and the Football Alliance and eventually the Integrated. And now it's become so money-driven and so um, orientated into getting as much out of it for yourselves rather than the um, <laughs> sustainability of the league. That's an interesting thing to add into a sentence, including the AFL. Um, that the Premier League is going to go with the same way as the MLS. It'll just be a closed group. They'll play each other all the time and it'll get boring, you know, mm. other than people in the outside world. But football will still carry on. There just won't be as much money in it, which in some some uh, circles might be a good thing because it'll bring the competition back rather than just spending beyond your means to try and facilitate a promotion to the Premier League. Mm. Yeah. I know, I, right, you'd be great, but not gonna happen. No, it's um, not. Josh Castle says which it's teams not. which teams said no. There's ten teams that said no. One of them I just want to point out is Tottenham Hotspur. Well, I've got a lot of time for Tottenham Hotspur. We all like Andrew Postecoglou, who is funny, it's good. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur this week have got rid of concession prices for the OAPs. So if you're an OAP supporting Tottenham fan, you will just pay full price. Um, there's now no longer a, a sense because of many, many reasons. Uh, if you're in, again, I pretty much said this last week. If you're interested in this kind of thing. Price football is brilliant. They explain it in much more detail of how rotten football is, um, in my opinion, from 
top to bottom. My understanding is the teams that have said no are your usual top six suspects. No. City haven't said no. Man, you haven't said no. Right, fair enough. Um, okay. let me, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a list somewhere. Bear with me. I know it's it's Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham, Liverpool, Bournemouth is one of them. Uh, Villa's one of them, which is interesting. Villa's one of them, yeah. They're oh, the they 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 are desperate for Premier League to become on its own, so they don't come down to EFL and get um, get the financial fair play punishment that they, they deserve. I do like they're, also, little... they're on the verge of the financial fair play issue as well. Mm, Villa. Yeah. I like how this whole thing's come about because we want to get rid of parachute payments, which is the greatest con in football. Getting promoted because you've been uh, getting a, a a money dividends because you've been right. relegated. It's like, eh, no, you, you adjust yourself to playing in the division that you're in. It's it's not the usual six, and it's it's this the, it blows my mind. Right, the ones that have voted against are Chelsea, and Tottenham, Liverpool, and West Ham. Who you'd probably expect in Aston Villa. Wolves, Forest, Crystal Palace, and Bournemouth of all. Forest of it's not it's too long since yeah. Forest Dream Championship. It's complete man, honestly, mate. It's it's, like Just, I say, it's money grabbing. That's anyway. all it is. The, t- the two sustainable teams that will always have money: City and Man United, because they are two of the biggest teams in the world now. Man City, one, weren't. Man City weren't, but they've now established themselves. All right, fair enough. Everyone's Actually. got their opinions on how. Um, but at the same time, they the seem to have gone up. It's like, mm, what are your account books looking like if you voted against the thing that gets rid of parachute payments? EFL's not as good, but Phil says a lot, a lot to answer for. I mean, mm. EFL tried to charge Leicester with something, then realised they couldn't charge Leicester for them because, like, because they were outside their jurisdiction. That's the kind of organisation that you're dealing with. They tried to charge something, then realised, oh, no, we can't. The rules don't allow it. Well, this is what we're dealing with. This is, what we, this is what's trying to fight the Premier League. These these people are trying to fight the Premier League. They've got no chance. They can't manage their own clubs. Um, anyway, we went, we went off on a massive tangent. Thanks, Mick, for that. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> well, we've got to our mark now, so yeah, we've done some hour. Um, predictions. I'll go first because I've already given my prediction to other podcasts. 3-0 Huddersfield. Um, if they get an early goal, it'd be silly. Again. Again. Um, there we go. Mick. I'm reverting back to one Rodham. It were two nil. You went. You were going one originally. We're two. No, I'm back, I'm back to two one. Last th- last time we went two nil, we won two nil against Coventry. Did I? You you went you went, you went two nil every game, and then we finally won two nil. You changed. Ah, oh, you did. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We go two I'll nil. Go two nil. I'll go two nil then. Yeah. Because we've we've discovered that my beard wasn't the problem because we've lost consecutively five nil since I had a shave. Mm-hmm. Um, it Inside might you be two nil. It yeah. might be two nil. It, it, yeah. it may have been me and my Hallam shirt, to be fair, because yeah. the, the podcast that I've had that on, we've looked well. I mean, we've lost nine games in a row, so. Uh. Yeah. Danny, prediction me. Um, I'm going to echo what you've said, Matt. I'm going to say 3 0 as well. And I agree, if Huddersfield get an early goal, that's curtains. And there were people on the concourse within 10 minutes. Yeah, there probably will be. It'll be horrible. Do you know if, if it's 4 and 5 0 again? It'll be a horrible atmosphere. All, all I'm saying is, I hope, the, I hope the chaos of stocks up on beer because there will be a lot of people after 15 minutes if Huddersfield are 1 0 up. Yeah. This, this is a team who are going to be nervous. Huddersfield are going to be nervous because it's a big game for them. Because they, this is an opportunity for them to take three points, yeah, put, put, put three points onto their board. You've got to try and take advantage of that. You've just Absolutely. got to try and take advantage of it. Um, but again, I don't trust these players to do so. Let's wait and see. Um, Harry says 3 1 to Huddersfield. Scott Kent says 3 0. Pratman says 5 0. Um, Josh Caswell says he'd take 1 0. Mm-hmm. Rotherham. Uh, Billy says 2 1 or 3 0. Uh, so 2 1 Rotherham or 3 0 to them. Uh, Martin Holland says 1 0 to them. It's Josh Ed, John S says another 5 0. Shellstone says 1 2. Well, Exco says 0 2. Uh, Josh Caswell says surprise. Bobby Madley isn't referee. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, they'll be saving that up for, as, a, as a, like a season finale for us. No, he's going to be referee <laughs> against Plymouth. Bet. No, last three games of the season, it's Gavin Ward doing third to last. You've got Keith Stroud doing second to last and Bobby Madley doing final game. Oh, yeah. God, they, no. no they, might even, they might even bring back Trevor Kettle from retirement just for the last one. Yeah, um, sounds like a plan. It's like fourth official, isn't it? Um, oh, God. So, the, you are good. if you want to get involved in, in the WhatsApp voice notes thing, um, it's an unmanned phone number, so don't be looking for any answers to questions. Um, <laughs> I'll, do, I'll be logging on tomorrow, downloading everything, and then that's it. We've already got two or three already, so 
uh, either go onto the Twitter and find it, find or Facebook and find the post and follow the instructions. Or if you've got a phone now, scan the QR code that's on the top right hand side. Um, we'll put it out as a probably an audio podcast, audio podcast, um, because there's no video behind it. But if we do find a way that's like a good background, we may well put it on YouTube as well. We'll let you know. Just keep it out. We'll do a preview and then a review for everybody if you want to do it. Obviously, if you don't want to do it, then don't, obviously don't do it. Um, instant reaction will be out Saturday night. There was something else I was going to mention as well. Mailbag. Mailbag next week. So it's next Sunday is the mailbag episode. Email us. Send us a direct message. Send us some questions to answer um, next Sunday. Again, we'll do the serious ones, like the who's in contract, who's out of contract. Um, if you've got any, you know, Barry Bannon-sized potatoes you want us to fight or anything like that, just let us know. <laughs> um, we'll go through them. Um, and finally, positive things about Rotherham as we've moved. Oh. It's been a few weeks since we've had one of these, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> Mick wants us to mention, Mick rightly wants us to mention, Ben's off on our podcast a lot. Sometimes, more often recently, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, oh, what's on there? I don't know. Anyway, Ben's yeah. playing for the NFL Academy this Sunday morning. So if you want to go watch, if you want to watch, if you want to go to Loughborough, you can go to Loughborough and watch some NFL football. Ben will be playing against some Germans. Um, it's on YouTube. So if you go to NFL Academy's Twitter page, there will be a link on you to watch on YouTube if you've got now to do on Sunday morning. Um, and lock, when number 86 gets smashed by a German, you can laugh right out. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> <right for me. laughs> Sorry, Ben. It's inevitable. Um, not not to sound horrible or anything, but if Ben does get absolutely wiped out again, sorry, sorry, Ben, but can we please put it on the following podcast? <laughs> Just put the clip on. Yes, bring, bring, yes, bring yeah, some, bring some joy to the podcast after losing six yeah. nil to Huddersfield. I'll, 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 I'll do something now. We'll wait till he comes on next time and just blindside him with it. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, Billy can't stand NFL. Understand. Um, but yeah, Jamie says 5 0 to us. Go on, Jamie. Good lad. Love it. I like it. Uh, Chris Tillis says 2 1, I think, to us as well. So end on some positivity. And boys, anything else? Hour and six out of this. I can't believe we've got an hour out of this. No. Um, anything else? Um, no. Nah. Wonderful. Thank you all for being with us as always. We'll be back Sunday evening, Saturday, so Saturday evening for the instant reaction, Sunday now, Sunday evening for the full review. No Thursday episode next week unless there's any news. There will be no Thursday episode. Um, we'll be back in the week after for the mailbag episode and we'll round up any international stuff that may or may not happen. Danny, thank you very much for being with us tonight. It's a, it's a pleasure as always. Yeah, no worries, lads. Always a pleasure. And Mick, thank you very much um, with your Hammerby shirt. <laughs> Starts soon, doesn't it? 31st, 31st oh, yeah. of March. I have, I have one thing to mention oh. before we sign off. <clears throat> Um, I just want to say happy birthday to my mum. It was her birthday yesterday. Um, happy birthday, guys, mum. Yeah, everyone wish you happy birthday in the comments, both live and on the um, the video itself. I, w I won't say her age because it's uh, not polite to mention a lady's age. But um, yeah, it's her <laughs> birthday. Just you right there. If you say her age, you'll yeah, see. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not saying anything. But yeah, um, I just want to say my mum's been a huge help and inspiration with everything that I've done, both in football and out of football. So, yeah, happy birthday, Mum. Thank you for everything. I muchly appreciate everything that you do for me. Happy birthday, Danny's Mum. Yeah, happy birthday, Danny's Mum. Uh, Mick, thank you. Any, any birthday wishes you want to... Oh, nah. Okay, cool. Nah. <laughs> thank you all for being with us. We'll see you all next time. Up the Millers. Up the Millers. Up the Millers. It's a wild, wild through a goal. Swansea beyond Fodringer. And the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire derby. Oh. And for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Rotherham United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box, Adolfi. He can hit them. And he does. Oh! Yeah! Adolfi! Secured their championship status for next season. 